Have you ever tried to track software testing in a massive spreadsheet? Multiple testers in the same file, notes scattered across columns, attachments lost in emails. It gets messy really fast. Now this use case is specifically for software testing, but I've seen this same scenario play out across multiple clients. So that's why Superfloof and I are kicking off a brand new series where we take that kind of huge spreadsheet and turn it into a complete power app, step by step. Now in this first video, we're going to give you a peek at the finished app, then go over requirements, the steps requested by the team, and start building the foundation. How do you break out an Excel spreadsheet into SharePoint lists? Now we could also use the same theories here for Dataverse, but for this use case, it is going to be SharePoint. But that's just the beginning. In the next videos, we're going to create the main screen so testers can see their assignments. We're going to add pop-ups that handle severity, the pass-fails, required notes, and attachments so that people can't claim that they just clicked accepted on accident. We want to have that pop-up functionality. We're going to color code progress tracking so multiple testers can see what's happening. We're going to use modern forms with tabs to keep everything organized. We're going to leverage some tools for PDF generation, which I've covered in a previous video that I'll link below. We're even going to cover approval workflows so nothing slips through the cracks. So if you're ready to move beyond spreadsheets and build a real testing app, you're in the right place. Let's get started with part one. Here we are in the finished Power App. Let's go look at the spreadsheet that started all of this. So I was given this by a client. This is not the client's data. This is stripped out and reformatted with fake data for our use case. So they were implementing a new software version in their organization, and they wanted to test it fully before rolling it live. So all of these departments that you see here had different stages of testing that they had to complete. And the assigned testers could be one or many. Now within each group or each department, they had different things that they wanted to test. So they also wanted the ability to restart testing and track every stage of the testing. They wanted it once it was complete to go to an approval stage or an approver, depending on who the tester was. They wanted main testers to only see their testing stages. So they wanted testers to see only their testing, things they have been assigned to here. They wanted admins to see the back end. And if we look at one of these, we wanted to be able to track who had completed it versus who was assigned. So here we see that I finished this, it passed, it looks good to me um, on the 5th but they also wanted the ability to restart testing. Now, if we click this button, it triggers off a flow. Yes, again, with another pop-up saying, yes, I really do want to restart the testing. And this goes through and clears out the testing results. You see now the green bar is red because nothing has been done yet. There are no done testers. You see here how the tracking details are still there though. I'll get into that in a minute. Here we have approval tracking PDF. So we're able to see who did what when. Now, if we look at notes, we have the ability to see the comments that people have made, but also down at the bottom, now that I have restarted testing, we captured that too. I restarted testing that had been completed by this person, no comments entered. Now, how do we translate all of that to SharePoint lists? Again, all of this could be done in Dataverse. I'm using SharePoint because that's what I'm leveraging here. So we have our testing checklist. So this is to correlate back to our SharePoint list or our Excel spreadsheet in SharePoint. So if we go and look at the list settings, and then I'm gonna split the screen. So hold on just a sec. So here we have the SharePoint list for the main screen. This isn't everything. This is just the first list that we've created. We have the title, that's what to test. We have the testing section, that's a choice column, and that's these salmon colored bars here because those are going to be consistent through this testing process. We have the description, which is the description here. We didn't really worry about resources, they didn't really want it here. We have the assigned testers. This is a multi-choice people picker, so you could have one tester or many. The done testers, this is a weird vernacular, but that's how you know who has completed the work. If it's complete, yes or no. I don't use yes or no often because a yes or no column in SharePoint 
has to default to something. A choice column, you can default to blank. You cannot do that in a yes or no column. So here I have the default set to no, because by default, all of these testing steps have not been completed yet. We have a notes column. I have done videos in the past about notes. I'll put a link to that in the description below. We have the approval status, the overall approval status. You'll see this is a choice column because it's either not started, pending, or approved. And by default, the choice is not started. If we go back to settings, we have a location for approval comments. We have departments. This is a lookup column. This is a lookup column to another SharePoint list. And the reason for that, as opposed to having it as a choice column, if we go back here, these are all the departments. Now, we could have done this as a choice column. However, departments for an organization are something you're probably going to use quite often. So having them in one location, one source of truth, is usually a really good idea. Now, the blank person column. This is something that at the time of this recording, this may be different when you're watching this video, this is a single person column that will always be blank. It doesn't show up in the views anywhere. The reason that we have this is because when you saw how I hit the restart testing, if we look at the testing details, I'm using that blank person to set using patch this to blank. And I'll get into that in a future video. Make sure you like and subscribe so you get notified with the future videos. And if you're a member to my channel in Kofi, you can download this entire app, the app, the SharePoint schema, as well as the flows for this. So make sure you join the membership as well. Let's dig into all of these different SharePoint lists. Quick reminder, you add SharePoint lists by going to data and entering SharePoint. I could type. You select your user account and then the list that you, or the site you would like to connect to and then all the lists. So let's go over these one by one. The very first list here is if I click edit data, this is the SharePoint one that we just covered a second ago with all of the information, all the notes and all of that. If we go back to it, here we have the admin list. M we only have two admins, myself and my husband, and we have an active column here, yes or no. I like to do this so that if someone likes to go on vacation, you can mark them as active or inactive without having to go in and mess with any of the other settings. That ad admin column is used here to show or hide our little gear icon. And if we go to testing items, these are the actual records of who has tested what and when. So you see we have a master ID. This ties back to the main record. Which testing step are we doing? We're capturing the title, which is which testing step, verify role-based access, who did it when. We're capturing because we're using um, user profiles, who the tester was, the severity. This information is captured when they click on the bug icon in the gallery. And this is this information here. Because we can restart the testing, I wanted to build this to be multiple reusable. So this list is able to have multiple records all tied back to the master ID. I'm going to hit cancel here. We have testing items. Oh, we just covered testing items. Testing screenshots. I covered this in a previous video. This is a SharePoint library where we're capturing screenshots of the testing stages. If we go into the back end and go into one of the records, from tracking details, they wanted the ability to print out this list. If someone marks something as failed, we would see that here as well. In fact, let's mark one as failed. Let's go back to the main screen and click here. And we're going to mark this as a fail. So it's a critical, I tested it. It's failure. Now, you'll notice, now we have more things required. If I say this passed, we don't require anything else. No notes, no screenshots. However, on a fail, and I'll get into this in the next videos, we have to enter notes as well as a screenshot. Notes on the fail. Let's add a screenshot. We have a spinner because I always like to do spinners to give the users feedback that something is happening. And I've covered that in previous videos. I'll do a link to it below. I stupidly chose a ginormous picture of Superfloof, so it took forever. 
but you'll notice that that stage is still in my testing because I marked it as failed. When something fails, the help desk is notified. So we have a flow on the back end that we'll get into in a later video, notifying them of that. So that stage is still here. It's still showing as red here because I'm not done because it failed. But in the tracking details, you see here I marked it as failed. So we're able to see the history of it. IT got their email. Everyone knows that something failed and needs to be fixed. They got the link to the screenshot as well of the fail. So we're able to track that and have it all for history. So that's testing items. I'll get into the, all of that in a, a follow-on video, not previous video. Here we have the software testing screenshots, which I covered in a previous video. We have the software testing PDFs, which if we look here, are the PDFs that I've created throughout this process of either the notes or the, uh, or the tracking details. Again, previous video, I'll put a link down below. Let's look at the testing approvers. So for every tester that's listed, we have two approvers, and that's in case someone's out of the office. And this is gonna be showcased in a flow that we're gonna cover in a later video with the first to approve. So two approvers assigned to each individual tester for the entire process. And then here we have those tracking departments or the testing departments. This is the one source of truth that we talked about before. Why have this as a choice column in 15 different lists? Let's say Quality Assurance changes their names. They're no longer Quality Assurance. They're the Quality Assurance team. If you have these as choice columns in 15 lists, you have to go into those 15 lists and find everyone because someone's going to complain. If you have it as its own list, one source of truth, one place to change it, that's it. And that covers how we take a huge, onerous, pain in the neck spreadsheet and turn it into a very user-friendly experience for not only your testers, but also the people that have to track all of this testing. Make sure you hit subscribe and follow. In the next videos, we're going to cover everything about building this app. We're going to create the galleries for the end users for their testing steps. We're going to create the backend galleries for all the admins. We're going to create the modern tabs. We're going to create all of this step by step together. If you found this tutorial helpful, please give it a thumbs up and leave a comment below. Let us know your thoughts, questions, and any topics you'd like us to cover in future videos. Sharing is caring, so don't forget to share this tutorial with your fellow Power Apps enthusiasts. Until next time, keep learning, keep exploring, and keep rocking Power Apps like a true pro. See you in the next video.